How's it going, Kryptonians? Welcome to my Superman and Lois episode 3 breakdown titled The Perks of Not Being a Wallflower. Now, this episode didn't have a shred or even a speck of the Captain Luther stuff, where some people thought maybe we'd get some dark or black suited Superman backstory as to what happened to that Kal-El on Captain Luther's Earth. That seems to be completely benched for now for more of a family centric episode, kind of with a parallel of the struggles of the Kent family into. Lana's family, but also if you do want to get villainous about this episode with how I've talked about the dual antagonists of this season, if you will, with how Clark has more of a brooding physical fight of a boss battle with his villain and Captain Luther. On Lois's side, of course, we have Morgan Edge, which was, I would say, a lot more fleshed out this episode to the point of where we got some twists with Kryptonian-esque powered people I did not see that coming. So yeah, there's a lot of family stuff in this episode at the same time. I feel like there's stuff boiling in the background with Jonathan that we're going to get to. But before we get into what the breakdown details, make sure you go ahead and like this video if you haven't done so already or if you do go on to enjoy it. And by the way, if you watch The Flash, my review should already be up on the channel. So if you're a Flash fan, go and check that out if you haven't already. But if you already have or if you, if you haven't, let, let's get on with this. So the beginning of the episode started with some family time, some very needed family time I would say. Almost the perfect family moment. Flicking paint on each other and, and having a paint battle I suppose. But then Clark is a terrible disaster happening on a bridge and just dusts right out of there as I kind of said at the perfect family moment. But I'm glad there was no kind of drama that unfolded from this moment because it really does pave the way forward for yes family time but also Superman time. He's not exactly going to let a bridge in freaking China get structurally destroyed. That's another thing I really appreciated. Some people have talked to me in the comment section about this before in previous videos. How much will we be seeing of Superman moments like this? I, I feel like we're going to see them just as frequent as this, or at least we should, because he's Superman, right? So I was really liking the aspect of the fact we get to see him in a day of the life of Superman, if you know what I mean. Saving a bridge from structural collapse, saving cars from falling off, holding the bridge up. A, a very typical saving the day moment I kind of expect to see throughout this series. And one thing I'm kind of pleasantly surprised in as well is in moments like this, you have the opportunity, especially for Superman level stuff where you have to hold a bridge up for CGI to look kind of dodgy. But I would say like it, that they still manage the clean look that they've maintained in the first two episodes, which I would say made the most impact on the audience. Because as I said, for the first couple of episodes or so, I expected quite a clean polish and everything quite a lot of entertainment. This is the first episode where I wouldn't say it holds the horses or the brakes, so to speak, on everything, because this was still a decent episode. But this is where maybe you would start to see some cracks. But no, like for all intents and purposes, th th this action, if you want to call it action, was decent. And then later on, we actually got a really cool Superman action bit, saving Lois. Another kind of cliche Superman moment, but I couldn't have enjoyed anymore. As the episode unfolds, we get a little bit more family time around the table, talking about the hearing. The kids in Clark were talking about hearing every sound in the world at once, but it's more like he can hear all the fluctuations taking place in the collective sonic frequency. A very Clarky nerdy response. We get the typical stuff of Clark and Lois kind of drilling in to make sure they're being careful about exposing the family secret. Obviously, Jordan's powers, even though we got an answer last episode. I think we all unanimously agreed in last week's reviews comment section that no matter what Jarrell says and what the scans say, there is more to Jordan that will probably, I would say, go against the grain, if you will, of the results. And I think we're starting to see that. But on the other side of family things, we have Lana and Kyle arguing about sitting in the waiting room for Sarah seeing her doctor. Lana's kind of worried about people asking questions if, if they were in there. I guess she just kind of wants to keep it all hush-hush. She just wants to avoid any of that. But this was only really the beginning of the Cushing household, if you will, issues that they have. So it's like, I, I kind of get what they were doing here. As much as the Kents have super-powered you know, issues in their household. You also have an example of a completely normal family for all intents and purposes there having their own struggles living in this small town as well. Now early we got teased with Clark hearing all kinds of things in the world, right? Like what we just discussed a second ago. And I like how the episode then demonstrated more of his powers, hearing Japanese people, then Chinese people, children playing to church bells ringing and he was smiling. Like it kind of gives you a little branch, you know, open to, oh, 
Oh, clock can hear terrible things going on. And could you imagine that burden? Hearing something and then choosing to not go save it kind of thing. But there's moments of beauty in this supersonic hearing as well. And I felt like that moment featured that quite nicely. But at this time as well, we had the school stuff going on with Jordan wanting to hang out with Sarah. But he doesn't really get to finish what he was about to say. Because Sean kind of overheard that while well, he was literally watching them in the background. And you have to admit, being in Sean's position, even though Jordan was innocent in that moment with trying to kiss Sarah he didn't know she had a boyfriend you would really be annoyed at that guy still blatantly kind of really interested in your girlfriend so yeah I, I kind of get Sean's angst in that moment which is when he proper barges into him and it, while this is happening simultaneously we can hear Clark is honing in on his son's conversations which kind of brings up the whole should Superman really always listen in to Lois should Superman really always listen in to his son's conversations it's like you get Clark's side with him wanting to obviously protect his sons especially I feel like it is basically justified with you know the situation going on with Jordan and his abilities but then you kind of understand how would they ever have any privacy you should be able to trust your kids it's a bit of a unique situation because I feel like there are just as many relevant points on Clark's side where you have a son with Kryptonian powers who blatantly can't control it because in that scene when Sean was really confronting him quite literally instinctually Jordan was manifesting his heat vision again. He was like going all eye rolly to the back of his head. There was a wave of red when Jonathan went to stick up for his brother. It, it was getting messy. And I'm not saying that he would have done that in that moment. But like, I feel like that moment right there justifies Clark's position. But then, of course, at the same time, later on in the episode, we had Lois say, do you remember the first time I caught you listening in on me? And like Lo Clark said, he thought he was going to lose Lois and he almost did. That all boils down to the trust aspect of relationships so between Clark and Lois but also between his kids you kind of have to trust them so I'm going around in circles at this point but it's just an interesting ethical debate in a way I still feel like Clark is justified at the end of the day especially when you have a kid who almost lasered in this episode he literally almost used the heat vision he didn't but is that only because Clark also turned up in that hallway in that moment that is exactly what I feel like the writers want to do in this point you sympathize with both parts of the characters, the, the the parental side, but also the boys, and how it's like, well, have you been listening to us our whole lives? Does this mean we've never had any privacy? Either way, though, this concludes with Clark promising them, just like he promised Lois once upon a time, that he will not look in or listen in on their conversations anymore, which must be incredibly hard to do as a father who has supersonic hearing. Could you only imagine the temptation to, especially with one of them having powers that they might kind of inadvertently released like Jordan did. You you would want to check in on that. So that's what I mean. I like the fact that they're introducing these real kind of problems you would have. I, I, that's the point of this show. These are real problems you would have if you were trying to be the Kent family. As for the Smallville Gazette side of things, where Lois has freshly started work after quitting the Daily Planet last week, we had this family victim, if you will, or the mother of a victim, Sharon Powell, who wanted Lois's help to nail Morgan Edge's ass to the wall. So this all began with her son, who was a miner at the Morgan Edge facility at New Carthage. For six months, he made decent money, but it changed the day he got offered an opportunity from Morgan Edge. He signed a bunch of paperwork keeping quiet but she believes that foul play was involved and she eventually plays this incredibly convincing voice message from her son describing that the opportunity wasn't what he thought and he just thought he should let her know that he loves her. Yeah, that, that's kind of like a crap. I think something's gonna happen. So this is where Lois's trail really picks up, like more than ever. We also see outside in this moment, someone in the car is taking pictures. He was blatantly reporting back to Morgan Edge because Morgan Edge is probably very paranoid about Lois Lane, the Lois Lane, picking up exactly what he's doing in Smallville and what he's been doing at these other places like New Carthage, especially with what we saw with that heat vision at the end of the episode. Like what the heck has he actually got cooking up here? But regardless, in this moment, they're on the right track because an explosion happens outside and lo and behold, it's a message to Lois because it's her car that blew the F up. So yeah, it's like Lois, just stop because 
next time it, you'll you'll probably be in the car. But back onto the boy side of thing, Jordan hears probably the best news he could probably ever want to hear that Sarah Cushing is breaking up with her boyfriend Sean. And uh, yeah, Sean is just like, why? What the heck? What the heck is going on? Following on with Sarah's side of things, she quits cheerleading because we also had that moment where Lana was teaching cheerleading at the school, but she quits. And this really began the catalyst for like a little kind of family intervention they had later on. Where with on the Kent side of things, we've had Clark try to understand his boys and the boys also understand their parents position and why they're worried well in this episode as well we also had Lana really just trying to understand her daughter Sarah as much as what Sarah was trying to really or couldn't understand why her mum was hovering around her the whole time and you can't blame Lana even though I get Sarah's perspective the way they told this story in this episode is that Lana never knew the reason why she even attempted so this is a year on and she never actually knew the reason from Sarah as to why she attempted to do what she did back then. So that would torture you as a parent. That would make you feel really paranoid and worried and concerned for your kid to maybe potentially even do that again, which kind of understandably made her hover around her a bit too much. So yeah, like you can, you, can, you guys can completely understand what I'm saying. You see the parallels between the families of understanding one another, uh, what they're all doing in these family journeys. And a kind of surprise to me, I'm more invested in the Cushing family more than what I thought I would be. Like, I, I thought I'd be mainly interested in the Kent family because this is their show after all. But yeah, like, I'm enjoying the Lana Lang or Lana Cushing side of things. Well, what about you guys? But let's talk about the football side of things because we had Jonathan playing football but on the sidelines and we see Jordan joining in and we see the players initially kind of taking the piss out of him, wanting to try out for the team. And naturally, Jonathan is worried about his brother, not only because he's not really a great football player, but also he knows what it's like to be picked on by those other players and that's what he's been enduring this whole time. And I really do feel like this is serving like an underplot for Jordan and sorry Jonathan in general and I'll get to that in a second so we had the coach try out Jordan and Jordan is literally taking other players out with ease like he even says this is my lane now bro and Jordan continues to play well completely smashing these other players with his like he has strength enhancement but not to the level of superman obviously we had this explained in the last episode and later on jonathan describes it to clark like it almost levels the playing field out for someone of jordan's size and i don't know about that but we'll get to that in a minute with like some of the is potential issues I have with this. In this moment though, the coach is annoyed with Jonathan for not telling him about how good his little brother is, which is when this wave of emotion washes over Jonathan's face and he must kind of feel like this is something people have been talking about for a while, how stripped out of the spotlight he is already through Jordan with the powers, this, that and the other, even though he's an understanding twin. Now his brother is taking the spotlight of football, he even says in this episode, you know, football's my thing, not yours. And we'll, we'll get to that, but like, I don't know. I, 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 they didn't fully fly into this, but what we got out of this episode is that he's going to continue playing football. So I feel like that storyline of Jordan, or of Jonathan's kind of envy of his brother's position now is only going to potentially get stronger and lead to a bit of jealousy. Literally, they're contrasting these brothers so much to the point of where Jordan's going to get in with the players even more, become even more popular and where could that lead? Maybe to the manifestation of Jonathan's powers? Maybe in a little outburst, potentially? We're gonna have to wait and see there. And I did find it funny how Clark was there the whole time because he learned through that little chat that he was identifying with Lana about her struggles and then kind of his struggles about the family stuff and what they're both going through. He, he learned that Jordan's being quite the football star and so he looked there the whole time. It really reminded me of the Jonathan from Smallville kind of lecture on Clark and the reason why he couldn't play football and obviously this is because he was much stronger than Jordan to be fair to why Jordan can still continue on playing. It's because the potential damage that he could wreak to these other players. It's just it's too much of a risk. And the thing is I know the only reason Jordan started this is because he wanted Jonathan's little football buddies to back off and how he says he doesn't have super strength. He just has a bit more than what he did before but my issue is that I could still hear Jonathan from Smallville screaming at Clark allowing him to continue playing because no matter what with this he does have enhanced strength you guys saw how much these other players were getting beat and even though they made a point of it that oh he just knows he won't lose control is something inside of him that he just knows that he won't it, I still find it like 
but isn't it too much of a risk? He is stronger. He could break one of their arms and Clark's allowing it to happen. At the end of the day, I, I, I'm pretty okay with it because he's a coach on the team now as well. So he's going to take an extra look at Jordan when he is in these in these practices. And also, as Jonathan pointed out, which is so much kudos to Jonathan, I, he thinks that his brother needs this. He, he, he's, he's seen him more happy than ever. The other players are respecting him and borderline becoming friends, which is why it must make it so much harder for Jonathan to kind of go back to that talk. I feel like this brother keeps losing and losing and losing on top of just moving to Smallville and losing more than what Jordan did, just like Lois le uh, lost more in, in, in a certain comparison there and how they both identified with each other through leaving a lot behind in Metropolis. I can't see this ending too well for Jonathan. I, I feel like in the in the episode of Sakami, he's going to keep seeing how well Jordan plays, how good of a footballer Jonathan is, but how obviously it doesn't compare to that of somebody who is quite enhanced through strength. So yeah, I just I don't see this ending well. But I kind of understand why Clark let his son do this over what Clark's dad, Jonathan, didn't let him do for the baseball team. It's an interesting debate because I could still argue, well, he could still really hurt someone. But hey, at least he's going to be there to watch them. I'm also interested to see how Sean and the other football players do act now around the brothers. Just because we had Jordan apologize to him, it seemed that Sean accepted the apology. But then in the episode at the same time, later on, right towards the end, inviting Sarah to a game, even though she's not a cheerleader anymore, it, they were definitely having a moment. So I don't know. Is this going to lead to more uh, jealousy from Sean? Uh, and is this going to lead to more trouble for Jonathan? Because his brother is still pursuing Sarah. I, it, it could go a bunch of different ways. But this is where we get to arguably the most interesting part of the episode. So we had Lois, who couldn't account for those three other employees, which means there was definitely more to that Sharon Powell story with her son and the voice recorder message. So she went to Sharon Powell's creepy hotel where she was staying. We had creepy music playing and she opens the door. And at this point, we had that creepy guy who was taking the photos, who threatened Lois for blowing up her car, basically attack Lois. She did the cliche Lois Lane Superman saving moment thing by activating the alarm, but there was a twist in this moment because this guy quite literally matched Clark's strengths to the point of where he was battering Superman to the floor. And by the way, I really appreciate how cool this scene was, like the slow-mo pause when Superman just burst in and that was all really cool. I found a lot of this fighting between these two characters pretty well done just because when you, you have to do Superman in combat, it's actually a thing where it's easier said than done because think about it, this is Superman. You're going to have to do it quite intelligently to not make it look bad, but at the same time you can't do too much because that would cost a bunch of money. So I feel like what they did in this moment was a perfect combination of what they, they could ever possibly do. Either way though, Superman resolves this fight through using his freeze breath to essentially freeze this guy and completely speed smacks him, which which was really, really cool. Sends him flying through the wall, but the reason why that guy got away and we saw him later on in the episode get fried is because Clark had to rush Sharon to the hospital um, because she was barely breathing. So yeah, I, I, was, I was thinking to myself a second ago, I was like, wait, how did that guy get away? But it was one of those things where Clark had to prioritize something else and that weird weird overpowered guy got away and we still don't have all the answers yet because when we got that moment right at the very end of the episode where we had that line of why is a person with powers working for Morgan Edge we see that guy who got away come across a woman in the road and she literally unleashed her heat vision on him and she said it's done I'll call a team I guess to just do clean up of the car and the body but yeah like how is this all working? Like, how is Morgan Edge giving Kryptonian-esque abilities to normal people? Has this got something to do with all the mining operations he's got in random-ass places amongst these towns and in Smallville? Are they somehow utilized? I don't know. It feels like some Lex elaborate plan. Yeah, I doubt that these are default Kryptonian people at the same time. So one thing we can link right now is that Morgan Edge, right, he's up to stuff. He's up to some fishy stuff. He wants to do all this stuff in these towns. And we have these Kryptonian, seemingly Kryptonian-esque powered people who have heat vision, super strength. They can quite literally take a punch, like a fully swung punch from Superman, which is incredibly dangerous. And yet, once again, link Morgan Edge to that. So somehow he's involved with these people. So I would love to hear your theories down in the comments below as to what you think is going on there. So even without, uh, you know, any Captain Luther in this episode, Lois's antagonist of being the more taking him down through journalism kind of 
of thing also is now bleeding over to what I said, well, Clark and Superman has the Captain Luther physical brawl antagonist this season. But now Morgan Edge is technically indirectly through his, you know, experiments, whatever he's doing with these Kryptonian-esque powered people is causing another challenge for Superman this season. So I, what I will say is that I'm really enjoying the villainy they've got going on this season. It isn't just Captain Luther, but we've literally got Morgan Edge, who is mainly Lois's villain, providing physical challenges for Superman as well. To the point of, of where you could argue Morgan Edge is not only a Lois Lane villain, it's a combined Lois and Clark villain and Superman villain that they need to bring down together. And the Captain Luther side of things is most likely uniquely Clark's. I would say that this episode overall, I felt like I wanted to gloss through a bit more of the details this time because it was more family oriented and focused. So even with the really, really interesting and engaging thing that we all want to see with the black suit Superman and, and what did that mean on Captain Luther's Earth? What is the backstory being put on the back burner in this episode? I still really enjoyed it. It was a nice change of pace. Not something that I would want like this every single episode in terms of I, I do want some of that other stuff too, but every now and again, I wouldn't expect anything else. Like, I don't expect levels of what we got last episode with each each episode and we still have to give credit to what we did see in this episode with that really cool superman moment versus the whatever the heck that guy was the mystery of these kryptonian-esque powered people certainly has me engaged uh and i i'm still liking what they're cooking up in the background with jonathan still and jordan how jordan seems to be gaining what his brother's life has been about his whole life if that makes sense while his brother Jonathan is losing and becoming more what Jordan has been his whole life. So that's gonna, I feel like, really lead to something as well. Like this video if you did enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe for more Superman and Lois just like this. Check out the top pinned comment where I provide links to my social media like my Twitter. You can support me on Patreon. You can join my Discord server to talk to me personally. But all in all, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you Kryptonians in the next video. Goodbye.